Uh, good afternoon, and uh, uh, we are uh, relatively, relatively new into this field, and we began our journey in 2009. And for last six years, we have been active in and around Bhubaneswar. And when we started, we had very clear objectives, like to visit this NICUs quite regularly, at least once in a week. Even if there were no babies to be screened, just to build the confidence amongst the staff uh, in the NICU and the neonatologist, we would visit those NICUs at least once in a week. And if at all, we would see them back in our OPD uh, on reviews or uh, seeing them uh, if they are uh, referred to us, then they would be seen uh, uh, on priority. We would not delay the exa examination. And we would provide them with a separate uh, waiting hall and a feeding room as well. And we also started with a 24-7 helpline number. So this number used to be with our manager, ROP screening manager. And he could be contacted any time uh, in the week. So, in this uh, process of screening in these uh, last six years, if some of you are trying to begin uh, the screening in your city, th these are the lessons which I think would be helpful. The lesson one which we learned is that if you have more number of people working for this, then it's better. So, me and Dr. Tapas, uh, both of us are equally trained uh, by the best in the world. And we have two separate teams. So when Tapas goes for uh, screening to the NICUs, I am there back in the base to attend to the follow-up patients or the ref referred cases. So we have two separate teams, two separate uh, people to enter the data also. So that helps. That helps in not missing out these babies in any point of time. Lesson two that we learned is that maybe in the initial years of uh, our uh, screening that neonatologists, they listen to their peer only. They would not listen to you. So the best way out is to find some like-minded people amongst those uh, neonatologists and we were fortunate enough to have few of our classmates or juniors who were trained elsewhere where ROP screening was active and they had come back to Bhubaneswar to start their practice. What we would do, uh, we would uh, invite them for the ROP uh, CMEs and make them speak to the neonatologists. Instead of us speaking to the neonatologists, making them speak was much more fruitful. At times, the plain talks means as much as means however you might uh, explain to the parents they would not listen unless you have it uh, explained pictorially. So we were fortunate enough to have a red cam with us, uh, which was donated by uh, one of the trusts, the Miriam uh, Hyman Trust. Trust. Uh, she was the lady who was a victim of a terrorist attack in London, and the family wanted to uh, use the money that they got from the government in charity, and they made us buy this machine. And this is how we started taking this machine around everywhere. But what we found, even after explaining the parents uh, with the images, they would not receive. So while we were uh, analyzing our data, we found that the patients who were screened for free, they would not come back for uh, the follow-ups. So it's almost like for them, an entertainment source. They would treat it as a bioscope instead of a red cam. On the other hand, the compliance to treatment and the follow-up was much, much better in, with those parents who had lost the, the child's uh, vision. So the best way to uh, use them in ROP screening is to make them the ambassadors. So when uh, we get them to our OPD for follow-ups, we make them sit in a single room with the newer patients. And if some of these patients who will be skipping their follow-ups often, we deliberately get them on those days when these babies would be coming. So that's how 
the interaction amongst the parents would help the complaints. We have been trying to follow uh, the NRHM and RBSK for funding our uh, project. And as Dr. Anand has already told that they pay around 10,000 rupees per leisure. But it's quite difficult. If you are trying to set up the ROP uh, screening network in your city, don't get disheartened by not getting any funds from the government. Maybe you may have to speak to Dr. Anand or people like him, I mean, learn the language, how to talk to the bureaucrats and get the funds from them. And over these years, what we have realized is that ROP is no longer limited to the big cities in the state. As you can see here, these red dots represent the areas from where we got the cicatricial ROPs. And in last six years, we have received 37 babies with cicatricial ROP. And they are from almost all the corners of the state. And that poses a challenge for us to reach out and screen those areas which are not accessible. And wherever uh, the uh, care is accessible, uh, meaning the NICU care is accessible, the tragedy is that the data which we collected over last six years, we found that most of these changes in the funders were related to the poor oxygen control. So one needs to speak to these neonatologists, not with authority, but persuade them, make them believe that whatever changes what we uh, saw them on the red cam are actually because of the poor oxygen control. So to give you an example, the uh, hospital uh, where we had our friends initially, they would have such kind of uh, changes in the fundus. 2015 was a year when we did not get a single, single treatable ROP from that hospital. There are three of them, neonatologists. They have been working so nicely that for a total year, we did not get a single treatable ROP. So that was quite commendable. And we used them to speak in the national uh, uh, conference, the neonatal conference this year. And uh, there was a good response from other neonatologists and people have started, started following them and they have made them their role models. Whatever you do, you have to document it. And documentation uh, uh, is possible if you have people dedicated uh, towards it. And right from the word go, you should have someone to capture this data. And that helps in getting grants or to approach prospective donors and also uh, with publications. Publications, please do include the neonatologists who are working with you. Encourage them to be a part of the study. So in this regard, uh, we published uh, last year about the reverse kangaroo method of examining the babies and one of the neonatologists was also a co-author. Now he goes around in every other CME in the city and starts preaching about all this. So what is coming into it? It's that the neonatologists now are getting interested with us. The people who would send us away now are asking us to visit their places and try conduct a study. So the data which we uh, collected over last uh, six years, uh, we find that uh, the incidence of the disease or the treatable babies are no different from uh, rest of the India. But the point here is that only 7% of these babies were treated. And amongst this treatment, 60% of were free of cost. And we are surviving on the revenue of this only 40% of these babies. And if we calculate the balance state at the end of the year, it has never been that we have been on the negative side. Yes, we were neck to neck but it is never on the negative side. You can earn money from screening, not from everyone, but the parents who can afford, you should always charge them. Now there is a glimmer of hope by spreading our uh, uh, screening to other parts of the state. Uh, we are teaming up with the Queen Elizabeth uh, Trust and we are going to train uh, five of the district hospital staff and the ophthalmologist there to screen ROP. Although we will be treating the babies, 
but most of the screening uh, job will be done by them and at the, at the end of three years they will be made to sustain it they will be running uh, the show and we will be backing out and I can tell you the lesson that will be learnt maybe next year. Thank you.